All right, so recently I posted on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, uh, kind of like an Ask Belmo Anything. And these are some of the questions that I got from those three social media platforms, and I'm gonna go through them and answer a bunch for you. William Germain says, should I move left, question mark? More often than not, yeah. Hey, it's worked for me. <laughs> Anytime I feel like I'm in trouble, I just keep moving left. Hit it harder and move left. Ah, it's worked for me for 30 years. <laughs> Rodney Bracey asks, what is your honest opinion on string pins as a professional bowler and as the son of a bowling proprietor? Um, I feel like string pins definitely have a place in the world of bowling. I mean, it makes a lot of sense as a proprietor why you would want to build a new place and put strings in. Uh, it's certainly a lot cheaper to run. However, the competitive bowler in me has played on string pins. And there's just something that doesn't sit right with me when you technically miss a spare, but the strings tie themselves up and knock the pins over that doesn't sit very well with me. I, I, I almost feel like if, if I were to win a title in that scenario, I honestly don't know if I, I'd probably ask to redo the shot. I, there's a part of me that thinks that's what I would honestly do because it would just never sit well with me for the rest of my career knowing I know I missed that and the strings took care of it for me. So from a competitive perspective, not a big fan. Um, but from a social play, uh, I'm all for it. Uh, WPG Diorama asks, who is your favorite superhero? I mean, there's only one true superhero. It's Batman. Like, Batman doesn't technically have any superpowers and he's still better than every other superhero ever. So I'm a big fan of old Batsy. I think he's pretty, he's pretty genius, he's pretty cool. And you know, the, the thing that I kind of, uh, if I could relate myself to him in any way is, guy just never gives up. Even when he knows he doesn't have Superman strength, he figures out a way to still get the job done. KBuff7 asks, when you were growing up, who was your favorite bowler to watch? Um, I've had a couple of people I've really enjoyed watching, but the very top of the list uh, is a good mate of mine, Timmy Mack. When I watched Timmy bowl, especially as a, as a teenager uh, and in my early 20s when we traveled around the world together, uh, it was really hard to take my eyes off of him. He just had so much raw power and so much emotion and his ability to repeat and just, you know, just execute to the level that he did. Um, I would catch myself many a time bowling against him in these tournaments, just kind of drifting off watching him bowl and just becoming a fan as I'm supposed to be bowling to beat the guy. I'm like, man, he's so, so good, so cool. Wish I could do that. So Timmy Mac, for sure. Uh, Connor underscore Luabi, maybe. Uh, what is the most awkward moment that you've had at a tournament, like an embarrassing story or strange moment many people wouldn't know about you? Um, the most embarrassing thing that has ever happened to me was actually when I was a junior and I had qualified to represent my state team for the first time. And it was one of the very first times I ever left Orange to go and compete. And so bowling for my state, we were at the nationals and all of the best junior bowlers in Australia were at the nationals. And uh, we were playing in the team event. It was the first event of the nationals. And uh, a lot of people were talking about this crazy two-handed bowler from Orange. So a lot of people came to watch. And my very first shot, I remember just before I took it, I looked behind and it was like everybody was watching my first shot. And so I picked my ball up. I feel quite 
pressure field. And as I make my approach, I honestly to this day do not know what happened, but I just forgot how to walk. I tripped over my own feet and I fell face first onto the lane. And my ball was going ever so slowly down the lane still. And I just remember laying on the lane, looking at this ball, thinking, I have to get up and walk back and look at everyone that is watching me. And so I thought, you know what, maybe my teammates uh, who are really close friends of mine, I'm like, maybe they'll be right there behind me to pick me up and, you know, kind of pat me on the back and say, it's fine, you know, it's first shot, doesn't matter. Uh, no, when I turned around, they were laughing hysterically more than anyone else. <laughs> so I, uh, I had to wait for my ball to come back and I had to finish off not just the frame but the entire game and then the entire tournament and all I could think about is every time I was walking to the foul line was just don't fall over. Like, at least it can't get any worse. Good news is I won the nationals, so I came back. <laughs> but I still remember that fall onto the lanes. Colton and Lily uh, ask, if you could give your younger self any advice, what would it be? Um, I think I think I would have told myself to become a better spare shooter younger uh, and to be way more versatile younger. Uh, I grew up in an environment that didn't really have a lot of crazy different oil patterns. Um, I didn't travel a whole lot. And because of my skill level at my age, um, I seemed to be striking more than everyone else. And so spares wasn't the most important thing because I would still win tournaments by hundreds and not spare so well because I would just strike so much. But I wish I had of I wish I could go back and tell myself, hey, get really good at your 10 pins, get really good at your seven pins, get really good at all your spares because you're going to run into people down the road who have been working on their spares. And so I think I probably lost a few more tournaments early on that I would have won if I had have worked a little harder. And, and yeah, probably just becoming more versatile. It, didn't, it took honestly until the later part of my, my amateur career around the world to really understand there are so many more boards to the lane that you are not good at playing because I relied so heavily on my ability to hook it so much and, and to throw it so hard and to just rely on all of that power and carry to get me through. But it's just not like that when you come on a tour or when you start bowling some of the biggest events in the world because yeah, the oil pattern's changing, they're constantly changing, they're forcing you to play all over the lane and I just wasn't good at it. So I wish I had started to get better at it younger. G'day, thanks for watching. If you loved this one, check out the rest of the videos from this playlist or any other playlist. Make sure that you like the video and please subscribe if you would love to be the first to catch any of the latest of the behind the scenes and a whole lot of other cool stuff.